ravaged by the bloody tides of four, kings and sultans, dukes and emirs. Adversity makes for strange bedfellows, my friend. And you must treat carefully if you are to decide the fate of Iberia. Well, this does seem a bit strange writing in my father's book. I found it while emptying out his chambers. A duke's chambers. Now mine. There are so many pages left in this that I think he had hoped to live to a hundred. Well, to be frank, or Catalan rather, I didn't expect him to pass so soon either. The second war for the islands was indeed his downfall, but he has much to smile on from heaven. As Duke Geoffrey II, I will take up my father's charge and pursue his ambitions. He wanted to see Barcelona independent, form the Kingdom of Aragon. I shall see it so if I can. With my wife by my side and a child in her womb, we will build upon the legacy my father started to build. I will make it my own, that I have no doubt. But the foundation has been laid, and I shall see the castle built. For I am Duke Geoffrey II of Barcelona. Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 role-playing series as, now, Duke Geoffrey II of Barcelona. I contemplated making this an entirely new series, but after consulting with some people, including the famous great Surreal Beliefs, uh, I think we'll keep it within this, uh, within this same set of episodes, so this will be episode 9, as you are seeing with the thumbnail thing. Uh, but however, going forward, if we ever decide to pursue another person within the same timeline of an original series, it will start its own series. Let me know your thoughts on that because it's a little ambitious. Uh, I have some plans for it to kind of make it a little more concrete. But let me know what you think about that or if you would just prefer to continue along the same line since I'd have to rename things. There's a lot that goes into it. But regardless, I am very excited to get into this today because... We kind of start all over, which is kind of a new fascinating experience. Having to switch gears within the same timeline to a new person and having to figure out everything about them and starting over. So I'm very, very excited. But of course, the best way you can show your excitement is by engaging the YouTube algorithm, be it giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, leaving comments, turning on bell notifications, turning on YouTube memberships, which is something that is going to implement in this part. Uh, we implemented a couple of people, and we're finding slowly finding ways to implement all the YouTube members and all the patrons. So this is the best way to get your name into the game and also support this channel. No matter what, I appreciate anything and everything that you do. So no worries on that. Also, if you are watching this video and it decides to inspire you to play Crusader Kings 3 to buy it, please do so through my Nexus because that I get a small commission it gives you a Steam key, so you're not missing out. You're not having to download a new platform. It is literally the same key that you buy from Steam just through my store and gives me a commission. So it is another great way, as I've mentioned before, to uh, support the channel. With that out of the way, guys, I am very excited to dive into Duke Giffrey II. You'll have to be patient because we have to establish everything once again. Role play face on let's get to it it's a bit weird to suddenly be a duke i had expected my father to live much longer than he did and his sudden death has put me in a little bit of a weird spot i suppose at 17 i am indeed ready in to take this duke title but I had hoped to establish my family a little bit. I had hoped even to receive some lands before receiving the entirety that is Barcelona. Nonetheless, I believe that my ambitions align with my father's and we will keep that idea in mind. I am a patient man. This is going to be very good considering the lands that I plan to extend into will require a lot of vassals. Now, a liege opinion doesn't matter so much to me because I will continue the idea of trying to become independent, but it's the vassal opinion and the scheme resistance from being a patient man that are most beneficial. As a diligent worker, it affects many facets of my life, unlocks 
great potential for me to develop my realm, but it also causes an increase in stress, which isn't exactly the best of things. I'm a diligent, patient person. It's a little bit of a conflicting ideas, but it's something I've wrestled with my entire life and I've made it pretty well so far. As a generous person, I am not hesitant to hand out money. Now, this may come back to bite me. It may even slow down development of my realm, but acts of benevolence and charity are no stranger to me. So why would I be concerned about that? As an astute intellectual, of course, my learning has greatly improved. And as a genius, thanks to the birthright and the bloodline of my mother and my father, let's just say I'm a little bit of a bookworm. But I've also excelled in all other areas. Outside of prowess, I'm not exactly the best swordsman. I won't be leading any armies, that's for sure, unlike my father. But I think we have people in place that would gladly take up that role. As head of my culture, a learning skill is something that is incredibly beneficial to me. I will be able to learn new technologies faster. I'll be able to progress the realm in many different ways. I'll also be able to invest in my learning skills a little bit better as well. Not to mention, my education gives me quite the piety boost. I am a very pious man. I think it is absolutely important to pray to God to seek his guidance and to seek the will of the church. In the midst of the Iberian struggle, that will bring about some conflicting ideas. But I think it will also allow me to expand my thinking outside of the box that even in ways my father wasn't quite able to comprehend. Now I think the most important thing is I still remain... Uh, claims are still mine. The dukes and the counties, uh, unfortunately, Thanks to the succession laws, the Duchy of Mallorca is actually underneath my brother, who happens to be my player heir for now. Radis, the sneaky little devil. He is a vassal of King Charles. Now, should I become independent? I think I could sway him to my cause. We'll have to see what we can't do. I'm not above attacking my brother for lands, but I would rather not, if at all possible. Now my wife, Duchess Inigen, Inigen of Barcelona, she is pregnant. I am excited to see whether it be a boy or a girl, I won't care. I will just be happy to have an heir. Her genius trait shared between us guarantees that all of my children, and therefore, well, I would say therefore, as long as we're picky, we'll remain that trait. Something we could foster along with other traits as our birth line descends further and further. She has the Midas touch, which means that should I then pursue the idea of stewardship, which would expand my domains, she would be excellent at supporting me with it. Her arbitrary cause, she does everything that she wants to. I, I'm okay with that. It's something we have discussed and it will work. But she's also calm. So while she does what she wants, should things go awry, she is able to stay calm and collected. And much like myself, she is also generous. I don't plan on holding a great deal of money, intending instead to build up my armies, to build up my kingdom, but also to give it away where necessary, which would be very, very useful considering I'm going to invest in diplomacy. This makes the most sense considering my learning lifestyle. Majesty focus is something that I will pursue as well as it gives me a prestige. And as we are about to see, I am in a prestige deficit. And I think it would be very, very worthwhile to invest in that. Now, when it comes to the different skill trees that I would like to pursue in my life, diplomat, august, or family hierarchy, I believe the best thing to do is to try and pursue the vassalization acceptance. On the condition that I can become an independent ruler, I can then encourage others to become my vassal. With that acceptance factor tied in, I think it would give me the leg up to convince those in the Iberian struggle to join my cause, which could then snowball into the Kingdom of Aragon before I even can blink. That is the hope at least. 
Now, Inspiring Ruler is, of course, great as well. The more powerful vassals we have, the greater my prestige is. And should I desire to sway anyone, the scheme power immediately from Benevolent Intent would work very well. So I don't have a problem controlling my vassals. At least, I hope I don't. Which is good because my vassals themselves... I'm a new ruler. I'm 17 years old. Of course, it's not going to be peachy right off the bat, but I still think it'd be beneficial to start swaying them. Now, there are other people that I need to sway, so we're not going to start with that right off the bat because I have an empty council position. I do not have a marshal to fulfill my purpose. However, I have a very, very good marshal in mind. Mayor Gumbo Krati of Olat. He's not the best. He's not absolutely fantastic. And while I certainly could bring someone in through a courtier marriage, I think satiating the powerful vassals is more important than not having them. And then also, De La Impures, he served my father and he served him decently well. But I have an even better person that we can bring into the fold, Countess Elisinda. She was tutored by my father, which I think is a great sign of, uh, of the potential relationship that we could have as a vassal liege sort of deal. Not to mention she is vastly superior to De La Impuris. That brings two people, two powerful vassals under my sway. And then of course their opinion of me is going to be absolutely fantastic. Duchess Inigwen is going to go into patronage because that is going to develop uh, significantly faster my desire to purchase or to research these innovations. We are still going to take up my father's hold of plenary assemblies. It should be in about 17 years, so by the time I'm 34, hopefully we'll be able to progress into that, which would change my limited crown authority and also would allow me to purchase and to go into different succession laws. Now, we are going to have to continue to work on this area. We will continue to move into Navarra as well. It is the hope of my family to continue and to endure. And I think it will work to my benefit. But for now, unfortunately, my prestige is at minus 100. Which means I can't do anything, really. It's time to sit back, let things simmer down, potentially work on some factions. And hopefully my first few years controlling the Duchy of Barcelona will go smoothly. I was hoping that this would happen. I was going to follow in my father's footsteps after reading through his book. It was rather ingenious, believe it or not, modifying a contract with his liege to guarantee a seat on the council. My thoughts immediately went to doing the same thing, but I still hold the contract of my father, which means that my vassal contract still involves a high degree of levies. It was something that I wasn't eager to do, so I decided to let things roll, and since the steward, my father, had passed away, it left a vacancy. And considering my traits, considering who I am, and considering the skills at my disposal, I was hoping that this would happen. To my vile vassal, I've come to the inexorable conclusion that you truly are the best candidate I have for my open, open council position, though it pains me to do so so. I'm unfortunately obligated to offer you the position of steward of West Francia. Don't mind if I do. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. In all of my years of living, I've never quite had a summer cold as terrible as this one. I'm reminding of this as I woke coughing in the early morning hours, a dull ache pounding through my head and my throat. This is terrible. You seem to be under the weather, my lord. I know a fair number of suitable remedies. We'll do no more than is necessary. Relax, you're breathing, Raymond instructed me. The feather in his hand looked almost ethereal. He began to gently brush me under my nose. Evil be gone, he urged as I sneezed loudly. The strange tickling did nothing to improve my state. In truth, I think I feel worse. Oh no, I don't feel great. I hope this isn't a short reign after all. And in the midst of some of the worst cold I've ever felt, of course, that's when Countess Elisenda of Roseo invites me to a feast. Absolutely, we'll do it. Why not? Let's look absolutely pathetic while we go to this feast. Every guest is gathered in the Grey Hall and our gracious host has welcomed us all to the feast. It appears that my Chancellor, Baron Theodosian, my brother-in-law, 
appointed just before my father died, has uh, discovered that Baron Gerard's inherited contract obliges him to more than you collected. Absolutely. Feudal taxes are increased. I appreciate it, my Chancellor. Oh, thank goodness. As I woke this morning and saw rays of sunshine falling through my window at Countess Barcelona's place, it took me a moment to realize I'd slept soundly. The first time in weeks. Did not wake up coughing once. Praise be to God. It appears that I'm going to follow in my father's footsteps. My first child is a daughter. And she has now become my heir. Praise St. Bridget. And Nogwen has given birth to a perfect little daughter. One day, child, you will carry on my legacy. Unless I have a son. What name should befit such a mighty lady? Ermengarda sounds absolutely fantastic. I love it. She's a genius, of course. A little infant's child. May you grow to be strong and wise, my daughter. I received a message from Bernat Amat. I proud through documents both ancient and less certain providence. Enough material to make you the rightful lord of the sheikdom of Afraga. One little bribe. I could spend 72 prestige and get an unpressed claim. Absolutely, we will see it done. And it doesn't appear we could go to war. And in fact, one of the things we have been missing are some alliances. We should see about going about that since apparently I passed on. None of the alliances passed on to me from my father. We can negotiate an alliance with Sheikh Mushin Ibn Hasham, who is the uh, brother, -in -law, my brother-in-law next to my sister. He will accept that. I'm very, very thankful. Let's push that as well. We could also push an alliance with Sheikh Salah al-Din Ibn Al-Mandir of Malagon. I believe that would be grateful in helping us. Thank you, sisters. But two alliances should be able to help us secure uh, some potential wars in our future. First alliance secured. Second alliance secured. Marvelous news on both end. And Kixel de Barcelona, my aunt. She's no longer my court jester. But she's dead. What a shame. Is there someone who would be befitting of such a thing? Hmm. My cousin, she is related to me by blood. She doesn't have a whole lot of good stats overall either. This may be the best solution. It seems a bit of a waste if I'm being completely honest. I could make my mother. Oh, that would be terrible. No, 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 no. Yeah, let's do that. That's That works for me. Is there a bodyguard suited for me while I'm here? Wolfgang von Falkenstein, who is my knight would come in as well. Absolutely fantastic. And we are working on Pancratios and increasing my relationship with him so my own bodyguard doesn't end up killing me. And looky what we have here. King Carloman II of West Francia has taken the throne from his father after his passing. However, the kingdom is split. I am now under King Carloman the Impaler of Aquitaine. This presents a very unique opportunity. He has no alliances right now, and if we were to go to war with him as an independence war, oh, I can't. Bugger. This would hurt too much. The best that we can do is pray and hope that here in the next while I'll be able to do it without. Oh, I would love to be able to get away from him not quite yet, my friends. Not quite yet. And much like the liege before me, I waited instead of pushing a council contract modification. And sure enough, from King Carloman of Aquitaine to my vassal, as an influential duke, it's only fair you have a voice on my council. In recognition of this fact, I hereby offer you the position of the steward of Aquitaine, of which I will gladly accept for the second time. And my coffers are starting to fill up again. With a man of my learning capabilities, I don't see why it wouldn't be beneficial for me to go ahead and start working on the two wards available to me. The first, of course, will be Ermin Ermingarda. She's my player and daughter. This makes sense, obviously. Yeah, she's only one, but hey, uh, genius at one-year-old is still quite genius. 
Second, I think we will work on Borel de Barcelona. He is my nephew. He is robust and rowdy at the age of three. I think this would be very beneficial. Robust gives him martial and intrigue. A prowess of seven, I think, would be something we should do. Let's invest in his martial education, even though it is one of the few things that aren't quite super fantastic, but I still think it would work. And then for my daughter, I'm curious. Maybe we let her grow up a little bit and see where everything goes. And while on the issue of my court, there is a couple of things that I can take care of. I have several unmarried courtiers at my disposal. And I think... Uh, Rolinda de Impuris. You're a bit older in age and you can't have children, which isn't a problem for me. But I do believe we could probably find you. A prowess. A man of great prowess. Lupu the Blood Dragon. He has a prowess of 34. He is a skilled tactician, a legendary blade master, and an unyielding defender. Why don't you join my court? There's no chance whatsoever of children because she is simply too old. But he should be able to join and we will be just fine. Now there is another woman in the realm who is unmarried. I should say recently widowed. And that's Antha, my mother. Now, having been with my father for so long, undoubtedly she's lonely. She can't have children. That's no longer the case. She has several grandchildren that she can uh, dote upon. But I think she needs someone who is very proud and very strong and could grow old with her. And that person would appear to be Napu Leuni. Now, I don't like complicated words. So Napu Leuni, we'll just call him Paul. In a matrilineal relationship, of course that's what they're going to do. Because she was a duke, or a duchess rather. If barely, and again, hmm, that works for me. She's technically lowborn, which I don't agree with, but she holds no land. She holds no council position. So that's just simply the way it goes. But regardless, we may be able to bring him into the fold. And Antha, my mother, she could finally have someone to potentially grow old and die with like she was supposed to with my father. But God had other plans. It appears that Lupu the Blood Dragon will be joined in holy matrimony with L uh, Relinda. And then Antha is now married to Paul. Welcome, Paul. Welcome to the family. As, uh, I guess, my father-in-law? Stepfather? It's a little bit of a weird thing to think about. But regardless, welcome to the family. And as such, Lupu the Blood Dragon and Paul have both joined me as knights. I have quite the retinue here. I've been invited to the second feast as Duke of Barcelona. This time, by Lord Mayor Nuno the Impaler of Cardana. He has a feast in the city of Puerguserda. It will be my pleasure. A warm welcome. I do indeed look forward to this. Hopefully something will happen. As nothing came really of any worth note. In the last feast I was invited to by Elisinda. While at the feast. It appears Mayor Sanka of Cardona is a little bit of a pain in my foot. The first time it happened. Barely even gave it a moment's thought. But my vassal Mayor Sanka has grown bolder. Her challenges no longer pass unnoticed among my vassals. She's testing my limits. There are others sure to follow, unless I give her a taste of my own medicine. Now, I could ignore her and steal her ideas. This would align with the things that I do. Diligence and patience are both up there. Mocking her foolishness doesn't seem like something I will do. Neither does blaming my problems on her. It's not in my blood to really lash out emotionally. We'll simply ignore her, steal her ideas, claim them as our own. She lost 15 opinion, that's okay. Ah, finally, a chance to prove my diplomatic worth. The Mos Arabs occupy a unique position in the Iberian society. It's unusual, then, to see some of their local merchants ask for an audience with me. We Mos Arabs tend to deal with a certain degree of extra difficulty when living our lives. He speaks evenly, without rancor, but there's clearly some steel to his words. 
All we want for is a small section of the cities in the county of Urgell to simply call our own and live amongst our people. I've come here to position you, my lord, to see whether you might magnanimously grant us this. For some simple 60 gold, the county of Urgell will gain Mo's Arab quarters, increasing development, and Philip will gain 40 opinion of me. It's not something that I can't deny. This is a chance to prove my generosity as well. Absolutely, you are absolutely welcome in my cities. Stepping for a brief moment outside of the role play, I believe that all three of my children in real life have this curious trait because I resonate so much with what's about to happen here. Role play back on. What? Why? How? There's never a quiet moment. My daughter and heir, Ermengarda, is so full of questions. I do my best to encourage her curiosity, but sometimes I cannot help but get exhausted by the constant stream of thoughts and queries. She gains curious, which pushes her into diplomacy and learning. And with that, we have our first trait, which I believe could push us even further. Learning seems to be her primary focus. One I'm not discouraged to push her into. I think this would be good for us. And good for her. There's a thought that's been going through my mind lately. In the four years since ascending to the Duchy of Barcelona, things have remained relatively calm and I'm not complaining. But I can't help but think that perhaps my liege, the King of Aquitaine, might be susceptible to some unfortunate tidings. King Carloman the Impaler does have an incredible amount of intrigue. And his council is actually my brother is in charge of the spy master. However, while it would take three years, there's an 81% chance that we could start this scheme. Most of the vassals like him. Of course, my brother does. He likes anyone. I say we try and go for this. Let's see what happens as we try to murder our king. We'll see how well it goes. We already have an agent. Melusini. Four agents. Oh, boy. Let's see how well this goes. It appears my spy master, Anthony de Barcelona, who is my sister, she's actually first in line. She's uh, relatively older than I am. It appears that her network of spies is indeed spectacular. She came to me one day and said, Dear brother, rumor has it that you may pursue an untimely end to the King of Aquitaine. I was at first hesitant because even among sisters and brothers, things could get a little bit heated. But no, instead she insisted that she aid and support me in this scheme. She is more than capable of doing so. And as a result, the chance to murder the king has significantly increased. It may take just a little bit less time, but I do believe we have the capabilities of dethroning our current king, throwing things into chaos as his son would be four years removed from attaining the throne as a legitimate heir of an adult that can be swayed by other people. And I find this ironic in the midst of the king's intrigue level and his spy master, who is also my brother. I'm hoping that uh, Antha is indeed as amazing as she says she is, as she claims to be. Even finding this out from her has impressed me enough. Antha? Help me get this done. And not but a little while later, Antha seems to come through. My spy master approaches me with a wicked grin. This pouch contains a powder most nefarious. If sprinkled on top of something, say a gift, it leaves no trace but will afflict whoever touches it with, wicked, with weakness and ill humors. Absolutely. 30 gold is nothing. Not feeling well gives him a severe penalty. I think this would be the best course of action. Well done, Antha. Well done, my sister. Well, damn it all. The existence of my plot to murder the king has been discovered. While my involvement isn't known, it will take a lot, a lot more 
for this plan to come to action. There's a significantly reduced chance. We knew this from the start, unfortunately, considering the intrigue level, considering who the spy master is for the king. The question is, do we abandon it? I almost think we have to. 16% chance is not going to be good enough. Having it exposed, we will abandon it for now. Oh, we can't start another murder against him for 10 years, which is very, very unfortunate. Puts me in a little bit of a sour mood, if I'm being completely honest. Seems I can't really do much in the four years, five years, since ascending to the throne, not a lot has changed. More developments than I care to deal with, but not enough action. Perhaps this chapter, the first chapter, the book is the king will go down as uneventful, but perhaps, maybe, it'll still come out on top. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the first chapter of Guffrey II's life as Duke of Barcelona. It was relatively uneventful, but I still think those episodes still have to happen. Hopefully you still enjoyed it. Hopefully I am following the role play of Count Guffrey II uh, just as well, if not better, than I did for the first one. If you think so, or if you have critiques, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below. But other than commenting, which I still think is absolutely fantastic, and I read them every day, if you want to support this channel, you can do so by giving the video a like, subbing to the channel, turning on bell notifications, but also, if you decide to purchase The Fate of Iberia or CK3, any of the Total War games or several other strategy games, be sure to check out my Nexus store in order to support this channel as I do get a small commission. We will continue Duke Guffrey II's journey in the next episode. Five years have passed. Not a lot has happened, but that is okay. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. This is Havoc, and I'll see you in the next one. Iberia, ravaged by the bloody tides of four, kings and sultans, Dukes and emirs. Adversity makes for strange bedfellows, my friend. And you must treat carefully if you are to decide the fate of Iberia.